So the first step to making a bolster pillow or a neck roll pillow is to determine the diameter that you want your the ends of your pillow to be, which will determine the circumference of the the roll, the neck roll. So I knew I wanted mine to be about nine inches or so. So I used a plate that I had in my kitchen and traced that. It's nine inch diameter and then cut that out. I knew that I was going to make my own feather insert for my neck roll pillow or my bolster pillow so I could make mine whatever size I wanted. But you probably want to start with whatever size pillow filler you can get. So if you buy it at Joanne or online or Rolly or something, then make it the size of your filler. Okay, so then the next step is to attach the welt to both of your end pieces. Um, I have a separate video on how to make welt. I don't show how to make the welt in this video. So if you want to, or if you need to know how to make welt, then you can watch this video. I'll link to it up above. Um, so once you have your welt made, you want to go ahead and snip some relief snips or relief clips into the welt so that it'll wrap around that circle. Otherwise it won't lay down flat and you won't be able to pin it onto that circle. So you've got to cut relief snips all the way down your welt about an inch or two inches depending upon how big your circle is. If you've got a smallish circle like this then you're going to have to make them a little bit closer together. So you'll see how I attach that. So then you're going to pin that on all the way around and of course you want to pin it with the welt cording inside and your raw edges to the edges the raw edges of your your fabric so that when you sew on sew this onto the roll um, you know it's the correct way it takes a little bit of thinking about this part to make sure that you get your welt on correctly or doing it wrong a couple times like I've done in the past so so you pin your welt on all the way around to both of your circles And I just pin the edges of my welt to the raw edge of my circle. And I go ahead and cut my welt to a half inch after I've made it. If I'm doing a project like this where I need to, a half inch seam allowance, then I'll cut my welt down before I attach it so that I have a nice half inch welt um, to go all the way around. And you may need to clip some more relief notches in there like I've done if it's not bending around your circle neatly. Okay, and then once you get all the way around your circle back to the where you started, we've got to join the two open ends or the two raw edges of the welt cord. So I just open the cord back up to reveal some of the actual welt cord, snip some of those stitches out, um, and then you're gonna cut off the welt cord cut it back to meet each other so that the cording inside is, um, you know, so you can butt up the cording to each other. And you'll see how I do that here in just a minute after I open up um, the welt cord, open up some of those stitches so I can get to the actual cording in order to just cut out some of the cording. We're going to overlap the fabric, but we want to cut out the cording only so that it'll butt up against each other and be nice and flat. And I think I show that here just next. Hopefully you'll be able to see it through. Yeah, okay, so then bend that around and just snip that off so that those two ends are right up against each other. And then you're going to fold over that raw edge. So fold that edge over and then tuck the other end of cord into that raw edge and then fold that flat back over so you're covering up the raw edge of the other end of cord and just make sure it's a nice tight um, fold over there and then put a pin in that to hold that in place. And then the next step is to take this to the sewing machine and sew all the way around. So you see that nice tight joint there? You can barely see it. If you get it nice and tight, it's, it's pretty invisible. Okay, so here we are at my sewing machine, and we are going to have uh, sew this, on, sew the cording onto the round end. 
and I use my zipper foot. You could use a welt foot if you have one, but most sewing machines come with a zipper foot, so I've just always used a zipper foot. I do have a welt foot, but I'm not used to it. I always use a zipper foot, so just go around as close to the cording as you can, and sometimes I'll use my the point of my scissors just to make sure that my welt cord is pushed down and I've got my welt foot right up against the cord to get a nice tight stitch around the edge. Now you are going to go around this again when you sew the pillow onto this part so you'll have a real secure seam here because you're going to have a couple rows of stitches on this. And just make sure that you are taking your pins out as you go. And there I'm, I'm using my scissors to push the fabric down to make sure that I've got a nice flat and um, close to the welt seam. And that's it. So that's sewed on, sewn on. And you see how nice and flat that is when you have the relief stitches in there. If you didn't snip your relief snips in, it wouldn't lay down flat like that. So. Make sure all your pins are out and um, that's one of your ends and you're going to repeat that same process on the other end obviously. Okay so the next step is to cut the cut your fabric for the body of your pillow. Um, you can measure around the end of your pillow like I did to figure out what circumference your circle is so you can cut your fabric for your body or you can use the formula diameter times pi in order to get the dimension for your body fabric to be cut. So I just took the easy way out and measured mine around and it was 28 inches around that circle, which is 3.14 times the diameter, which I think was eight on mine, I think. So I cut mine, I believe it was 28 inches. So anyhow, that's, that's the two ways you can do it. So I'm cutting my fabric here to um, the correct dimensions. I wanted my neck roll to be 38 or 40, now I can't even remember, 38 or 40 inches long. And then to wrap around that end of the pillow, I needed 28 inches. So I cut it 28 by 40, I think is what I ended up doing it. And um, there's my 28 by 40 piece, and now it's time to insert the zipper. So I have, I make my own zipper and you want to cut a, a snip into both layers of fabric. That's why I folded it in half, but you want to cut a snip into both layers of fabric at the end of the zipper. Um, and then you're going to open up your zipper all the way and lay it face down, lined up with that notch and then pin that first side all the way down. So I've got my fabric opened up right now. So um, I'm just pinning through one layer here. So you're going to pin all the way down through one layer on one side of your zipper. And then once you've pinned through the one side, you're going to pin the other side. So you'll bring the other so you see how I've got the uh, zipper pull face down. You want to make sure that you do your zipper pull face down because we always pin right side to right side. So then pull the other side of the fabric up to meet the other side of the zipper. Find the notch that you snipped initially when you laid your zipper down. Find that notch and you're going to line that notch up with the other side of your zipper. That's the purpose of that so that you make sure that you're even on both sides. And then once that notch is lined up with the edge of the zipper, you're going to pin this side all the way down. So this is an invisible zipper. I don't know if I mentioned that, but this is an invisible zipper. So with invisible zipper, you have to sew it in with the zipper open. So um, pin it open, and then when you get to the sewing machine, you're going to leave that zipper open in order to sew it in because with invisible zipper, you have to so as close to the teeth as possible and you have to kind of push those teeth down in order to get right up against the edge of the teeth and you can kind of see how um, invisible zipper is curled up and you do have to press it now I make my own invisible zipper I buy it by bulk and make my own so in order to even put it together you have to press it flat 
I don't know if you have to do that with the, I think zippers that you buy already made at the fabric store, they're already pressed for you. <clears throat> but this one, you have to press it in order to assemble it. And so when you're sewing it in, you have to kind of push the teeth down in order to sew right up against the teeth. So you see how I'm sewing right up against those zipper teeth without sewing into them? That's what you've got to do with the invisible zipper. And then when you get to the end, you have to kind of go around the zipper pull and you'll see it kind of, it, it causes your seam to, to bulge out around your zipper pull. So go ahead and sew it and then you want to close your zipper just a hair like I just did there and then re-sew that stitch line because you can see how that stitch line kind of flared out there at the end to get around the pull. Well, now I'm going back in to sew nice and close and tight to those zipper teeth. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. You see how the stitch line kind of flared out there because the pole was in the way? So now I'm going back to the other side of the zipper. So I closed up the zipper a bit, and I'm sewing nice and close to the teeth on that side as well. Okay, so the next step is to close up that little bit that's left at each end of the zipper. So there's about four inches on each end of my pillow that needs to be closed up. So you just put your right side to right side of your fabric and you're going to stitch down a half an inch seam allowance and then bring your stitch about four or five stitches behind the zipper. So you see I'm sewing right a uh, half inch seam allowance and then I'm just pushing my zipper down and I'm going to stitch right there behind the zipper. You can feel the zipper with your finger. You're going to do about four or five stitches behind there. I like to back stitch and forward stitch a couple times to make that a nice strong uh, seam. Just get behind the zipper a little bit so that that end is of the zipper is basically enclosed. And the same thing on the other end. So I'm going to line up those notches. It's hard to see. I kind of am out of frame here. But you line up your notches, and then you're going to sew a half an inch all the way down, and you're going to push those push the zippers together in order to sew behind the zipper teeth just a little bit. And you'll see what I mean here. I'm putting a couple pins in just to hold everything together as I sew. Okay, so half inch seam allowance, back stitch at the beginning, so we want this to be nice and strong, and then you'll see when I open up, when I get down to the zipper, I open it up to make sure my zipper is, is met up there as if it were closed, if, as if it was zipped shut, and then I sew like four or five stitches behind those zipper teeth so that when I open up my pillow, the very end of the zipper on both ends is, is covered by fabric. Okay, so the next step is to sew in the two end circles to basically close up the pillow. So I like to line up that seam of where I joined the welt on the end circle with the seam of the pillow where the zipper is installed basically. So if you line up those two seams, uh, it makes for a nice clean pillow because generally you're going to put the zipper side down that way that seam is down also so line up those two seams and pin that in all the way around and hopefully it'll be a perfect match this side ended up really nice and was a perfect um, the uh, the pillow body is the perfect uh, uh, dimension for the diameter of the end circle so pin it all the way around and then once you get the pins in there, um, you'll want to put some relief snips in the pillow body fabric. So once that's all pinned, we'll do that. So now I'm snipping some relief snips into the body fabric. Just make sure that you don't snip in too far, of course, not past the welt line, uh, obviously. Um, otherwise, it won't lay down flat for you to sew. So you've got to put relief snips in there. Otherwise, you won't be able to sew it on. 
Um, so do that, and then we can go to the sewing machine and sew the ends on. A closer look at the relief snips and how they allow you to push that fabric flat. And now it's time to sew those end pieces on. Um, this part, you just want to be slow and um, deliberate about it. Make sure you get your welt foot right up in next to the cording. Okay, so now it's all sewn and I'm just checking to make sure that all my seams are nice and tight and I've sewn nice and close up to my welt on both ends. And I'm gonna clip any loose strings and just make sure that everything's neat and tidy and I've got tight seams all the way around. And then I am going to check that zipper and make sure my zipper is in there nicely and that I haven't caught any threads in the zipper. So. I'm going to close the zipper up now and you'll see how nice and concealed the invisible zipper looks. It looks it's a, it's got such a nice clean look. You can't see the zipper at all. It looks so nice. So the very last thing is to stuff the pillow with the feather insert. So I'll bring that over to my sewing table here and um, open that pillow back up, open the zipper back up and let's stuff that pillow and see how that baby looks. So I made the uh, pillow insert um, with some loose feathers and I believe that was actually uh, a bed sheet that I used for the, the body of the pillow because I didn't have any, um, any fabric for, uh, for the insert. So I just used that and it worked beautifully. The pillow looks very nice. So make sure that you um, leave me a comment and let me know if you have any questions about this tutorial. And don't forget to like and subscribe, y'all. Thank you for watching. I'm going to link you to my welt video and my um, boxed pillow video next. Check those two out. Those are great videos um, to follow up this video. So that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks.